Thank you for checking out Philman Rollap and Associates Municipal Market Update for the week of September 19th, 2022. This is our 39th posting, and we typically post once a month, but we did take a break for July and August. Philman Rollap and Associates is a municipal advisor to government. My name is Adam Bauer, and I serve as CEO and president of Philman Rollap and Associates. Our first slide, we are just taking a Bloomberg professional shot. And what we're showing you, or screenshot, I should say, and what we're showing you is a change in the 30-year mortgage rate. And if you look at that far right, you can see how it's pretty much gone up almost exponentially, then tapered off a bit, and then it's gone back up again. And so if you go back to December timeframe, and you're seeing mortgages for 30 years in that 3% range, and now you can see they're over 6% range. And so we've talked a lot about, we we as society have talked a lot about inflation. But when you think about the change in interest rates, this has to be one of the more dramatic areas of inflation. Now this drives other areas of inflation as well, but we, uh, the consumer who needs lending has a much higher cost of borrowing in September of 2022 than it did December of 2021. And for many of you who are municipalities, your cost of borrowing has gone up dramatically. The 30-year mortgage uh, is just an example. I think it helps illustrate it. But now I'll get into the rates that impact you more specifically. This first table is the municipal market data. Um, and what we're showing here, what we call that the MMD. And what we're showing here is the 30-year and how it's changed going back to January 3rd. We've taken the first... Uh, uh, day of each month or first trading day of each month and try to show that. So on January 3rd, the 30-year MMD for a AAA credit was 1.50. As of September 1st, 2022, that's up to 3.41. And we also tried to show you some of the monthly changes there. So right the month of January, it went up a lot, 34 basis points. And then not at all the whole month of February before March started. And then again, in the March, April timeframe, you can see it went up there. Then finally in May, it actually came down. So that first June posting shows a negative number. Um, and then we got, we lost all that. Uh, month of June, it just went right back up and to, you know, two basis point difference, where, which how much has gone up, not that big of a difference. And then in um, July, you can see there that first August one posting, a decline. So July saw uh, rates decline, but then August rolls around and, that all gets taken away. And now we're back, we're all the way up to that 3.41 mark. So pretty significant difference. This, this is more than double. And what should also be pointed out is this is the longer maturity. And I'm gonna show you later, the longer maturities have not gone up as much as the shorter term maturities have gone up. So we have a really flat yield curve, but I'll get to that in a moment. Well, here we are. So that green line, that represents that first uh, row in that table I just showed you. And, but what it does is it doesn't just do it for the 30 or does it for the one, two, and you can see all the numbers listed there in the bottom. So we picked some specific maturities to target to help illustrate our point. Um, but hopefully what you notice is the one year maturity has a lower interest rate than a 30 year maturity. And that's typical. What you've probably all heard is an inverted yield curve. And I'm sorry, this is the US treasury. I'm, I'm focused on the U.S. Treasury right now. I was focused on MMD, um, but what we on the last slide. But what we are also showing here is that red line, and that is as of 9 16 2022. That is uh, not not only flat but inverted. You see how that one year maturity has a higher interest rate than the 30 year maturity. Many economists, and you can just log on Google and see this, would say that is a sign that we have a recession coming. Um, and so that's one thing that causes a lot of investors concern. But hopefully what I'm also hoping this graph help illustrate is just how much higher interest rates are from where they were at the very beginning of the year. And you can see that difference between the two. And you can probably also notice that the short-term rates, as I mentioned earlier, have gone up in a greater fashion. But just to make the point really clear, the last slides are showing were MMD. These are the tax exempt rates for issuers. This is actually the U.S. Treasury curve. Um, and uh, issuers do use the U.S. Treasury curve, and, and we do issue uh, taxable debt. But I just want to make sure we're looking at two different things that have done comparable um, changes. 
Now back to the MMD. And this is where we're showing, I try to put all this in perspective, is the interest rates are on your vertical axis, years are on your horizontal axis. Now we've taken every MMD, that one year, one through 30, put them in there. And then the gray bars represent the range of interest rates going back to 2005. The red bar represents as of last Friday, 916. I've done what almost 40 MMUs and a good portion of them, that red line is almost scraping the bottom. And I think what you're hope, hopefully noticing now is that's not the case. Not only is that not the case, we've actually kind of drifted more in the higher uh, interest rate environment. So we're just kind of past that halfway point or what, it, what appears to be half that past point, especially in the earlier maturity. So rates definitely are, I've already said this, but they are much higher than they were at the beginning of the year, much higher than last year. And now if you go back to a 2005 range, we do have a bit higher rates than, we, than we've seen um, normally. Now, what's causing a lot of this? And that is the inflows and outflow of municipal bond funds. Uh, municipal bond funds are major purchasers of uh, municipal bonds. The green bars represent money flowing in. The red bars represent money flowing out. And if you look to the right there, you can see a lot of outflows. And it kind of, there was some large ones, and now there's been some small ones and some weeks where we don't really have it, but uh, there's a trend towards outflows here. And that means we have less buyers, so less demand for bonds. Now, how does that compare to supply? Well, supply has been up in a few weeks, but also what you're noticing is if those bar charts are below the lines or dotted lines, that means um, the supply is lower than it has been for the last two or three years. But look at this week. Uh, you have an FOMC meeting coming up where the it's been widely broadcast that many feel that the Fed is going to increase rates, rates by 75 basis points. And so there's not a lot of issuers looking to get in the market this week. And you can see that's why that line that bar chart is just so much lower. Now, even though the FOMC meeting is not listed on here, that is expected to be the 920 and 921. But here are some of the um, economic uh, items on the calendar that will be looked to to kind of make a judgment of how things stand. But that most important thing is that that interest rate change. Is it 75 basis points? Is it 100 or is it, or is it even 50? Um, I think we've heard, we've heard a lot out there at 75 basis points, but we will see um, what the FOMC does. So that concludes our MMU for September. And I uh, want to list here the uh, registered missile advisors that Philman Rollup and Associates um, has available. I encourage you to reach out to any one of them or reach out to me with any questions, and we'll be happy to follow up or give you more details on um, something more specific. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to posting again in October.